Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be talking about Tolchwood Episode 5, Small Worlds. Um, so this, I think, was a pretty big improvement over Episode 4, which I gave a D. This is a, this one's a C-. minus. It's not amazing, but it's not, like, horrible, you know? I'm I'm happy it exists. That's, <laughs> that's more than I could say for Episode 4 and Episode 2. So... This one had uh, fairies in it, and they will, they kind of attach themselves to this little girl, and everybody who offends her, they, they kill in this kind of gruesome way with people like coughing up leaves, and I think that's that's a really interesting concept, you know, the little girl is kind of annoying, you know, they do the same thing they did with Fear Hole, where they make a little girl creepy, and it just comes off as cringe. Rather than actually creepy. So, this episode loses a few points for reminding me of the episode Fear Hole. But, um, I feel like the concept is more interesting. And, <clears throat> I like how Jack, we, we meet, like, one of Jack's former levels, who's now in, like, her 70s or 80s, we don't, we don't really know. But, she thinks that Jack's, um, is Jack's son. Like, she thinks that he's his own son. And the guy she used to date in the 40s was his dad. So I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I like that. It kind of, like, shows an explanation for, like, how he aged. And it shows that he still deeply cares about her, but he can't really be with her, because like the Doctor and Rose, she keeps growing up, and he stays the same age. I feel like that's something similar, like a lice pillow you could draw to Doctor Who. And I, I think it's sweet. Now, her death scene is a bit ridiculous. She gets rained on to death. Um, I don't know, you know. <laughs> maybe she could have... Maybe she could have gotten a call. Maybe she would have been safe then. Uh, I'm glad the cat didn't die. They did this thing where, like, you thought a cat was gonna die. And I'm really glad it didn't, because he was very cute. And I love cats. So, at least that happened. Um... I feel like the other characters besides Jack didn't really get much to do here, but they were fine, you know? I, I think it was a really good episode for Jack, like, one of the first few, like, episodes that were centered on Jack. I like the flashbacks of him in the 1900s, the, um, and how all of his friends died from this creature, so it has more of a, the villain has more of a personal connection to him. And I like the ending where the little girl has to join the fairies, and... I mean, she doesn't really mind, so I guess, you know, no harm, no foul. And, you know, it's defeating the villain, but it comes with a price. I like when shows do that. I don't like when it's just like, oh, well, I guess we defeated a bad guy, and no harm was lost. You know, nothing was lost. I like when people have to lose things to get something else. I think that's something George R. R. Martin really wanted to do with his Song of Ice and Fire. So I like the way the episode was resolved. Um, but yeah, I really don't have much to say about this one. Like I said, it's a bit silly. <laughs> uh, I feel like the dad, the stepdad isn't really an asshole for like no reason. Like it's like, oh, no wonder your dad left. I just feel like that's kind of like, do people really talk like that? Do they? The failures are a bit silly looking and the getting rained on to death was ridiculous. So I think the major plus side to this episode was Jack's relationship with um, his formal level from the 40s. So yeah, I think it's a good episode for him. Uh, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And how about who's your favorite character on Tultred? And why is it not Owen? <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. We'll be talking about episode 6. And until then, peace.